uh, where she begins on page 355, and a gentle reminder, we're in Advent, so we're saying the Kyrie, not the Gloria. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be his kingdom, kingdom. now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Lord, be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting, for God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory, Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height. Look toward the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command, for God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The canticle appointed for us this morning is Canticle 16, as found in the insert to our bulletin this morning. We will recite this canticle responsibly by half verse. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to Israel, and free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Born of the house of through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in sight of all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation. By the forgiveness of sins. In the tender compassion of our God. 
The dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and it will be praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is my eighth year with all of you, which means some of you have heard some of my stories more than once. Um, but just in case some of you haven't, I'm, I'm going to risk repeating myself. 
My father, um, among other things, was a land surveyor. He was a licensed land surveyor. But the way that he earned the primary part of the money that supported his family was by being the supervisor on road construction jobs. And he would go out and he would initially walk over a section of countryside. Uh, this was in the era um, post uh, President Eisenhower of really constructing the entire interstate highway system in our country. So my father's timing was really good for this. And uh, his company would send him out to look at a piece of property that they were going to bid on to see if they could get the contract to build this particular piece of interstate highway. And my father would look at where it was marshy and soggy and where there were mountains in the way or rocks that were going to need to be blasted through and he provided the estimates, he provided the numbers that his company then used in making the bid. He retired when I was in high school and I used to go out and help him sometimes with his surveying and so on this one particular occasion I went out with him and we scrabbled around on the um, edges of a great cliff of rock that was not cooperating. <laughs> it was not cooperating according to plan and so they had to do some additional blasting to change the angle. And I thought of my father this morning and I thought about all of those interstate highway projects Ohio is a little more rolling for the most part, but we are in a part of the state where it is possible to see sections where um, mountainsides have been blasted to put a highway through. And both our first reading and our gospel reading this morning talk about the leveling of mountains and the building up of low places to create a level place for the people of God to safely walk. And having grown up in Vermont and gotten car sick any number of times because the old pre-interstate roads followed the rivers and went up and over the mountains, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the leveling and the building up that goes into our highway system. You have by now noticed that the candles are purple, the hangings and the vestments are blue, and Deacon Lydia is wearing a purple uh, stole. And I'm sure at least some of you are thinking, okay, who screwed up? <laughs> blue and purple are both traditional colors for Advent. Purple is more common. Uh, but blue was very prominent for Advent at a certain point in the history of the Anglican Church. And blue is, of course, the color that's associated with the Virgin Mary. Advent is a season in the church year that faces in two directions at the same time. We look back and remember the Virgin Mary saying yes to God and giving birth to our Savior Jesus Christ. And a great deal of our celebration of Christmas is about that first coming. But in the season of Advent, we also remember all of the words spoken through the ages about the fact that Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead. And purple is both the color of royalty when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords comes among us once more. And it is also the color associated with repentance. So for me, so glad to be an Episcopalian, for me that Anglican both and makes it possible to hold together as one our call to remember and give thanks and celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ among us and at the same time use these four weeks of Advent to reflect on my life, to look for, if you will, the high places and the low places in my life that need to be transformed and adjusted 
by adding to or taking away from, so that I may be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And as our colleague says this morning, that uh, when that comes, we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And as Paul says in the letter to Philippians, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. So we are used to making New Year's resolutions on New Year's Eve, but we've got four weeks of Advent in which to reflect on our lives and make resolutions, to consider what we might need to change in our lives to more fully prepare for that moment when we stand face to face with the one who is to come again and when we will in that moment see our lives through his life. Now the good news is we have not been left to wallow in depression over all the ways that we fall short of the glory of God because the gift of God to us in Jesus Christ is grace. And grace means undeserved forgiveness, unsought for sometimes healing, and the unbelievable joy of experiencing the love of God, not only for us in the birth of Jesus, but the unbelievable love of God for us in his promise to come again, and that all things will be made new. That life as it has been and life as it is is not the end of the story. So Advent offers us opportunities. Opportunities to add to the light of Christ in our world. And last week I mentioned the Christmas backpacks for children in the children's chapel. I mean, I'm sorry, in the uh, guild room. And the wonderful tote bags for the adult men and women who will also receive Christmas and be able to participate in the joy that we feel almost without thinking about it at this time of the year. As you were coming in, I'm sure you also saw the basket overflowing with warm socks and hats, scarves, mittens, and gloves for the men at the shelter. And um, it's full. We will bless it at the altar today, and Deacon Lydia will be taking it with her when she next goes. But um, we still have two more Sundays in Advent and Christmas Eve. So if you haven't visited the sock aisle yet in the, in the store, you have plenty of opportunity to do that. Take that as an opportunity. Every time that we give to someone else, every time that we bring joy to someone else's life, every time that we forgive from the heart. We are making the high places in our lives lower and we are raising up the places that need to be filled in. And we ourselves are making the highway of God that will be for all people to walk on. Amen. 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 Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he stood in the right hand of our God. He will not be able to glory, he shall be living in the dead. Amen. 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 Amen.
of the people this morning are given in form two, form two appearing on page 385. In the course of silence after each bidding, the people offer their own prayers, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Mark, Arthur, and William, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for those who have asked us to pray for them. Fred Myers and family, Jane Battles and family, Laura, Liz Russo, Bonnie Humphrey, <coughs> Phil and Margie, Ron Misko and family, Theodoro DeVaz, Boz and Mona DeVaz and family, Andrew, Lindsay McMillan and family. Brian Johnson, Andy and family, Tom, Ted and Jean Ramsey and family, <coughs> Brian Flory, Kathy Vilas, Tim, Luke and Gwen Reynolds, the Eugenio family, Dory Warren, Stuart and Anita, Jim Pender, and Richard Hoffman. And for those whose names are on our lips or in our hearts. I ask your prayers for thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Praise God for Tate Eugenio, Samuel A. Costello, Francis E. Costello, Mr. and Mrs. A.C. Ernst, and those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, who, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins together against God and our neighbor. Page 360 in your prayer book. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you, you by our word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we want to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. When I walked in oh, early, oh, please sit. <laughs> early this morning, I walked in so quiet, and I saw this basket brimming full of donations. You know, first-rate socks and thick hats um, and gloves for the men at the shelter, and uh, it was such a glad surprise, I guess you'd say. And uh, thank you for your thought. You have a bulletin insert. <clears throat> the nominating committee has been formed and their names and phone numbers are printed on that insert in your bulletin. Please be thinking about folks who might be good uh, as serving on the vestry. And if you think of someone, give a call to anyone on the nominating committee and uh, let them know. And you can, you can, you can volunteer, to, just say. Um, Carolyn, you had a birthday last week happy birthday and um would you like to have a blessing okay come on up <laughs> carolyn i lay my hands upon you in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit holy and living god we give you thanks for your beloved child carolyn and as she begins a new year of life in your service, we ask you to pour your Holy Spirit upon her. Fill her with your grace. Give her the joy and wonder of seeing you at work in her world. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Yes, thank you for um, Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Okay, any news or announcements, information you need to share with, with each other this morning? Okay then, <laughs> go buy those socks. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us your trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we must not be temptation, but to the rest of the evil. Kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. salvation.
Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.